Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Based Business Podcast. My name is Parker McCumber, and I'm your host. Uh, if you haven't been with us before, and you're not familiar with myself, I am a serial entrepreneur. I have businesses in real estate, e-commerce, coaching, luxury item investing, and uh, I like to invest in stocks and crypto as well. Uh, I have a degree in business management and military science and got my master's degree uh, in business administration. And I started this podcast mostly because I note that there's a lot of misinformation and myths that surround business and entrepreneurship. And I wanted to provide value and some insight to people who are interested in the field of business entrepreneurship and leadership and uh, just kind of provide a based perspective founded in logic and reason to share that with the next generation of business leaders and entrepreneurs. Um, so I hope that makes sense. All of the Based Business Podcasts are unscripted, so you're just going to get real, raw feedback and information from myself. And the majority of these podcasts are based on uh, viewers or listener feedback. Uh, for example, our subject today is discipline, self-discipline. Uh, and the way we got that was uh, submitted questions. I'll post a link below where you can submit your questions to me or to uh, you know the podcast, I guess, in general. And the question that we're answering today is, what's the most important quality an entrepreneur can have? And I think I already get away when I said discipline uh, or self-discipline specifically. And I've kind of gone back and forth over the years as to what my answer to that question would be. Uh, and it can be phrased in different ways, I guess. You know, what's the most important quality an entrepreneur can have? What's the most important trait they should have? What should they be working to develop? Uh, you know, there's a, a lot of possible answers. Some people say communication. Some are going to say leadership. Uh, and I'll, I'll get into those in another podcast. I think for this one, we're going to uh, keep it to discipline. And the reason I say discipline is that the the term discipline and self-discipline is, is synonymous with traits that I feel like uh, anyone in a leadership position should have. And if you're an entrepreneur and you're developing a, a business or an organization, I think it's very important that you have these traits uh, being self-control, self-mastery, self-restraint, all words that are synonymous with self-discipline. Uh, now, why is that important? And why is discipline important? And why is it important for an entrepreneur specifically to have that trait? Well, to me, personally, my personal definition of discipline or self-discipline would be an individual's ability to overcome obstacles and weaknesses through persistence. And I think persistence here is key. Many entrepreneurs or business leaders in general, you're going to uh, arrive at challenges, arrive at obstacles constantly, especially early on in your journey when you're trying to develop an organization and grow the business and the brand, right? Uh, you're not gonna have any following or maybe you don't have enough capital, you know, you, you're just, hands are tied and constrained. Uh, I would advise you to be persistent and look for alternate avenues. Uh, but this is where discipline really comes into play. So being persistent until you reach your goals is the product of being someone with high discipline. Uh, my friend, Frankie Scope, he goes by now. I hope he's okay with me using his name on here. I'll ask for permission. Uh, and if he says yes, then I won't edit that out. And it'll sound awkward like this right now. Uh, he, he once shared a coaching philosophy with me that um, said there's no greater praise than being labeled as highly disciplined. And I fully agree. And why is that? It means because you're, if, if you're labeled as highly disciplined, it means that your peers the people around you, your community, they recognize you as being someone who is persistent and will be persistent until they achieve their goal. It means that you are laser focused, 
It means that you are dedicated to achieving an end state. And it means that you're someone who's goal oriented. Now, I believe firmly, I think I said this previously, discipline drives action. Action leads to achievement. So being someone who's disciplined, being persistent, you're going to persistently take action to achieve your goals, to accomplish your objectives. So inherently then, someone who is disciplined needs to be aware of their weaknesses. They need to be aware of obstacles they may encounter or that they need to overcome presently. They need to be uh, constantly setting goals, right? Because if you're going to take action to achieve something, you need to have something to achieve, right? So uh, constantly setting goals, conscious of the effort and actions that they are taking, and then consistent in their efforts to achieve and accomplish those actions. Uh, and lastly, I would say they need to be aware of their progress. So people ask then uh, if we're going to say discipline is the most important aspect of being a leader or being an entrepreneur or running a business. If discipline is the most important aspect of that, how do you develop discipline? How do you train discipline? Right. Uh, I have, you know, a 12 year background now in the military that the vast majority of people do not have. Um, maybe you were a Boy Scout. I was a Boy Scout. You know, was, there's, I guess it's just Scouts BSA now, not Boy Scouts. Um, but I don't think you need to be inherently a member of those organizations to develop discipline or to, you know, really be. Uh, able to train discipline. It's something that I think anyone can train and develop at any stage of your life, no matter where you are, who you are, what you do. Uh, so I'm going to share with you Parker's five steps to develop discipline. Step number one, you need to set goals. Uh, I've previously mentioned I'm very goal oriented as an individual. Uh, when I coach other people, whether it's coaching Little League football uh, coaching other members of business or peers in the military. Uh, I always, always, always advise goal setting. If you don't have something that you're working to achieve, then your efforts can be kind of floundered because you're just spread out, going with the flow, doing whatever. Uh, always, always, always set goals and prioritize. After you've set a goal, let's, let's work through an example here while we go through these steps. So I think a very easy way to build discipline is to build a habit of exercise. And if you're not to a point where you can do exercise, you could do something like making your bed every morning. That's like the foundation of military training. You're going to make your bed every single morning with the hospital corners, and then you're going to work out. Um, but let's say, let's say your, your goal for the purpose of this conversation is that you want to lose 10 pounds. That's a goal that you're setting. Uh, and really, it can be just that you want to, you know, be healthier. You want to establish a habit of exercise, perfectly good goals. Um, so for the, the sake of this conversation, we're going to say you want to lose 10 pounds. Step number two, you need to make a plan to achieve that, whether that uh, for the sake of this conversation, uh, it could be you need to work out consistently, you know, say five days a week, 60 minutes a day at least. Or you're going to track your macronutrients and you're going to eat healthy. Um, or you're going to count your calories, right, etc. Identify what your goal is. Make a plan that's going to take you from where you are now to achieve that goal. Okay, that's step two. Step three, commit to the plan. Now, this is a very easy thing to say and not necessarily an easy thing to do in practice. Uh, but you need to recognize that you sat down and you made a plan that was going to get you from point A to point B. You might have to amend that plan as you go, but we're going to assume right now that you have a, a excellent plan that is going to get you your goals. 
chances are you are not doing everything in that plan presently. Otherwise, you would probably already have achieved that goal. So there's going to be changes in your daily life and daily routine that aren't necessarily uh, comfortable for you. For example, if your goal is to lose that 10 pounds and part of your plan is exercising five days a week, but you currently exercise zero days a week, you're going to have a very hard physical struggle up front where your body is going to be sore when you start lifting weights, when you're going to fatigue very quickly, when you're going to want to eat more because your your body's not used to burning that those calories and that energy and is saying, whoa, hold on, I need I need to replace what I'm I'm you know burning. Um, so it's important that you recognize you made a plan. That plan is going to help you get to your goal. We need to commit to the plan and we need to keep the plan and we need to make sure that we are not cheating the plan and ourselves with a lack of effort or a lack of, of consistency, which brings us to step four. Step four is taking consistent action. Now, plans may be different, right? You may not always uh, have a plan that's going to be cut and dry like I'm working out five days a week. Um, but the notion of taking consistent action does not change. You need to constantly be moving forward to achieve that goal. So with our kind of discussion-based notional goal of losing 10 pounds, that um, consistent action piece would be, okay, we are exercising five days a week for an hour a day. Let's set our schedule and let's be consistent with that. So Monday, I'm going for a run for an hour. Tuesday, I'm going to lift upper body. Wednesday, I'm going to do the elliptical for an hour. Thursday, I'm lifting lower body. Friday, I'm going to do uh, all the accessory stuff that I didn't do maybe or go for a bike ride or something, right? But you set that plan. Those are the five days you're going to work out. I'm not a fitness coach or anything right now. I'm not telling you to do those things. I'm just saying you set a plan. You got five days. Stick with that plan. Don't cheat the plan when it gets hard. Take consistent action daily. I would even counsel or recommend um, in taking your consistent habit, make a consistent schedule. Keep that plan for three weeks, right? And then assess where you're at. Uh, make sure that you're constantly aware of what your plan requires and the effort that you're putting into it, right? And then don't don't deviate. Stick with it. So on the simpler example, if your plan is to build discipline is you're going to make your bed every single morning, and that's going to be a daily discipline for you. Every single morning, make your bed consistently. Uh, and then step five, if I'm on screen, recognize the progress that you're making and recognize the achievements that you accomplish. I think one of the things that's very disheartening for someone who is trying to build discipline, say with our fitness habit, is that if you are actively exercising and you wanted to lose those 10 pounds, but you actually gain a couple pounds, uh, but say you lost two inches off your waist, recognize, hey, I lost two inches off my waist. That's progress. I wanted to burn that fat. You gained a couple pounds probably because you built some muscle. So recognize the progress that you've made, right? And recognize the achievement of losing those inches and continue to take constant action, consistent action, and be committed to your plan. If you need to, then we're going to supervise and refine that plan uh, so that we can continue to achieve and continue to uh, build our discipline daily. So I know for some people, um, I have a friend who, who does his daily discipline. Uh, I don't know why I put it in quotation marks. I actually have a couple friends that do this, uh, is that they run one mile a day or they run two miles a day. And 
they do that for an entire year, 365 days, right? That's crazy talk, uh, to me anyways. I am currently training for a half marathon, and I am sucking with the shin splints, but uh, that's okay. So they set a goal that they were going to run daily. They made a plan on how to achieve that, being morning run, afternoon run, one mile a day, whatever. They committed to uphold that plan, and then they take consistent action to achieve that plan being they actually go run their daily mile or two miles and then recognize the progress and the achievements that they're making along the way. Uh, for example, one of my friends that does his daily mile or two mile runs, he posts every 10 days, hey, I 10 days completed, 20 days completed, 30 days completed. Uh, some people do a month to month or whatever. And that's just so they can share it, but they're also recognizing themselves. I'm not necessarily an advocate for you going out to brag about your achievements, but I definitely think you need to recognize them, at least on the individual level. And if you have other people that you can share them with, that you can kind of brag about, and they're going to pump you up, do it. Get that, that dopamine, you know, get those people to pump you up uh, and keep you motivated and inspired and working hard. Because at the end of the day, if you're continuing that to take that action, you're continuing to build that discipline. Uh, so the big thing, I think, for entrepreneurs uh, and, and the important part about this is that if you're somebody with high self-discipline, you're also somebody with great self-control, great self-mastery, and great self-restraint. Going back to our fitness example, if you are trying to lose those 10 pounds you're, and you're taking consistent action as far as your diet and your um, exercise, you're probably not going to be someone who goes and eats a pound and a half of Little Debbie cakes on Saturday. Exercising self-restraint. Uh, maybe that's an extreme example. But you're definitely, definitely going to be more conscious of the decisions you make and uh, restrain from rash, foolhardy, or uh, non-logical decisions. Um, so self-control and self-restraint are, are a big piece of this. And I think that the, these are skills that you develop because you are a disciplined individual. Uh, just to share some of my personal disciplines. Um, and and you know, keep in mind, I'm not perfect here by any means. But I definitely feel like these things help me in my business careers and, and with my investing practice and stuff. Because I'm, it gives me a way to demonstrate maybe some self-discipline, self-control, that kind of stuff. Uh, so I, I, at a minimum, exercise five days a week. Uh, three Right now, it's been six days a week training for this half marathon and oof, killer. Um, but I, I do powerlifting three days a week. I run three days a week right now. That's part of my discipline. And then on the seventh day that I'm not exercising I just have a personal step goal I make sure I get 10,000 steps that I'm still active that I'm not couch potatoing and, and ruining the day um, so that would be my, my one of my personal goals another one is that I try to read a book a month uh, and it doesn't have to be a big long book or anything like that I, I honestly will <laughs> I've kind of bent the rules sometimes to read shorter books um, I guess there are no rules it's just a book a month uh, but it's just a personal goal for me. Uh, and then I try to make sure that I, I learn something and implement those things, you know, back in, into my life uh, when I find positive things or negative things that I can either avoid or integrate. Uh, so those are just a couple examples for myself. Uh, but I would definitely challenge anyone who's interested in business, entrepreneurship, leadership in general to set goals, make plans. Commit to the plan, take the action to achieve the plan, and then recognize their progress and their achievements. Um, honestly, in doing so, I think you develop a lot of self-discipline as an individual, but I think you also build some really positive habits as far as goal setting, planning, and then being goal-oriented, goal-focused, and achieving those goals. I think that that's a very 
I don't want to say underrated because people really care about achieving goals. Um, organizations care about it a lot too. So uh, it definitely helps you out. But I think it's something that's often overlooked is those planning steps as part of setting a goal. Maybe a goal is dictated to you. Maybe like if you're middle management or something, your, your, your CEO or your boss says, hey, we need to hit X amount of dollars in revenue this this quarter. Like, go do it. Uh, and maybe you don't have a lot of buy-in to the goal individually. But if you can contribute in how can you make the plan or make a plan for yourself to accomplish that, then you get a little bit of buy-in into the plan, you commit to your plan, you take that consistent action, right? And then you recognize your progress as your achievements. Uh, I think that that gives you buy-in to the goal, even if it wasn't necessarily your goal up front. Um, all around, I would say that, that developing discipline through those five steps and then practicing that model in your life consistently will definitely make you a more effective leader, a more efficient business owner operator and uh, definitely someone that more people can look to and aspire to be like and you know build build a little bit more of an organic and real admiration base and following that'll, that'll be beneficial for you uh, so that's my take on discipline again this is just unscripted raw kind of conversation so I hope everything I said made sense if you have any questions about it, feel free to uh, drop a comment below. Our podcast is on YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music, and like 20 other places now. Uh, you can also you know, look us up on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Shoot me a message. Shoot me a question. Um, I do my best to try to respond to everybody. And I build these kind of podcast conversations uh, around questions that I receive. So this has been episode two of Base Business with Parker McCumber. Probably won't get any worse. Probably will only get better from here. Uh, I look forward to your, your guys' feedback, your comments, your questions, and uh, go build that discipline. <laughs>